Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Street Smile Solutions, streetsmilesolutions.com. And I'm here today to talk about Invisalign G8. I just got out of the webinar. I learned a lot. I didn't learn as much as I'd like, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and digest it and regurgitate it back to you, the important points, what I think you should know. Again, I have to say this as a preface, as a disclaimer, as a CYA from my own attorneys that say I have to say this on every video having to do with Invisalign because every time I post something about Invisalign, it ends up with a shitstorm, honestly, of legal letters from either Align Technology or other aligner companies who claim that I'm disparaging them or who claim that inadvertently by talking about Invisalign, I'm disparaging them. And it's like ridiculous, y'all. I'm putting out these videos because consumers are asking for information. Most, my doctors are really focused more towards doctors asking for information. They're, they know that I'm good at taking very technical information and digesting it and letting less experienced doctors, this is really not meant for orthodontists, this is meant for other doctors who do Invisalign who are less experienced and didn't go to orthodontic residency. What do you need to know about this feature? Is this a legit feature? Should you use it? When should you use it? That's one thing Invisalign does not do well, is explain this in an easy way. Um, they have some expensive courses you have to go to, but they don't really provide that information to less experienced doctors. The course today, they had one last week on the 12th, they had one today on the 19th. There was very little information about it, um, very little promotion. I think it was actually one of their better Ask the Expert series. Some of them are bad. This one was decent. I actually learned something. It wasn't anything I didn't already know, but it was nice to see them validate ideas I already had. And, you know, again, I have to give these disclaimers because anytime I post anything about Invisalign, it's a shitstorm of various attorneys pouncing on me. And you know what? I don't make any money off these videos, to be honest. My consultancy company is called Straight Smile Solutions. I help to support doctors to do more ortho. It's not just Invisalign. It might be. It's whatever they want to do. You want to do an off-label aligners. You want to do an alternative aligner. You want to do braces. You want to do phase one. You want to do airway. Great. I'm on board. The only thing I'm not going to help you with is direct to consumer. I'm not going to help you with that because you know what? I don't want to get involved in that. Been there, done that. And that is liability for me. So every, if it's ortho, I don't really care for some types of companies like fast braces and some other ones. I just think it doesn't work out well. Um, so I might decline some stuff, but for the most part, if it's ortho, I'm going to help you as long as we have kind of the same goals. And I have over a thousand pieces of content. Hopefully they're helpful for you. I don't make any money off this content, you guys. Well, that's not true. It's monetized on Google now, but I mean like a check, a hundred dollars a month. Come on. So what it costs me to make one of these videos in terms of legal fees and stuff like that when the shit storm rains down is significantly more than I make posting one of these. I'm posting this as a sacrifice to help you guys because no one else is doing it and that's why I'm doing it. So please, if you are an, another aligner company that perhaps I did a little consultancy agreement and I, and I signed a, you know, a non-disparagement agreement, I'm not disparaging you by talking about Invisalign. I'm just explaining something. That's all I'm doing. I'm not saying it's better. I'm not saying you're worse. So please, if I get any more shit storm, you know, legal letters in the mail after posting this, I'm going to start naming names and it's gonna affect your bottom line. That's all I'm gonna say, because now it's a threat because I'm getting mad, because this is absolutely ridiculous what's happening. Picking on me and bullying me is not helping your company, it's just making me mad at your company. And I'm not gonna speak favorably about it very shortly. So, and you know who you are, there's quite a few of you out there. All right, anyways, let's talk about Invisalign G8. Is it real, is it legit, is it just hype, is it bullshit? Um, decent presentation today, there were two speakers, one of them was John Morton who must be some type of research scientist. He's not a doctor, but he was incredible. So John, if you're listening to this, you were amazing. You should definitely be speaking more. You were probably one of my top five Invisalign speakers that I've ever heard. You definitely know your crap. So good job. There was another doctor. She was from Brazil. She was very educated. I really liked her. It's just very hard to understand. Um, you know, I, I would love to see, I realize that you know, Invisalign is expanding in Latin America, but you know, maybe do this in your native language and have it translated. But in any case, helpful. My concern is that the cases that were shown were really easy cases. I mean, they were so easy. Um, not everyone's doing that easy cases and they weren't even done. They were progress cases. And it wasn't anything that I think I could have, couldn't have already done with the existing features out there. It didn't, didn't wow me at all. So for what they're promoting it as, I didn't see it. The proof is in the outcomes. The, and I did, they didn't even really show us their clin checks too. They just showed us the photos. So, eh. I would really, really like it if Invisalign would show us when they release a new product, say, and they're hyping it up, 
I would like to see initial and final records. I would like to, and a, and a lot, not like two, okay, or three. And I would like to see progress as well. I wanna know, did they have refinements? I wanna be able to see and play and manipulate with their clean checks. And then I'll understand the product more, right? So because Invisalign failed to do that, my question is how many cases were really treated and these weren't even looking great and they weren't even done. So is this really a real thing? I don't know. Okay, so in Invisalign G8, the way they described it, and I'm probably not describing it the same way they did, but it is a new series of defaults, slightly different attachments, slightly different force levels and thicknesses of the smart track to accommodate for better outcomes with deep bite cases and also with transverse issues, you know. Um, in the past, I mean, for me, the deep bites, I know I don't have any issues on them. I don't need to overcorrect them because I know how to handle them. I ask for certain things and my clients will know that. And I do use a lot of anterior bite turbos. And I was so excited today to hear that they totally validated everything I've been saying for the past couple years. They are like, yes, anterior bite turbos are the best. They help with TMJ issues. They help with deep bite issues. They help prevent posterior open bite. You should use them on transverse issues. You should pretty much use them on a lot of patients. And I've been doing that for ages. And if you are one of my clients, you know I'm a huge fan and you know they do amazing things. So great, you validated everything I've been saying. I already knew that and great, okay? So, and so now the good news is, is that if you weren't somebody who was using a lot of anterior bite turbos, they will now be standard and default on cases that they claim need them, which is fantastic because you don't have to ask for them anymore. Now that doesn't change how I do things. It's just one less button click, one less asking for things, um, but they're gonna be default. So they basically saying that they've proven that they do help in a lot of different cases. And a lot of people don't use them. Now, what does this tell you also? Well, if you're using other aligner companies besides Invisalign, I hope that some of these white label companies and some of these alternative aligner companies that are out there realize how amazing anterior bite turbos are. They're not proprietary to Invisalign. A lot of people have them. Not all. ClearCorrect does not have them. That's a major one. That's the number two aligner company. I don't know why, because they're not proprietary. They're so easy. There's nothing doctors have to do and they're magical. So I don't know why they don't have them. Dumb move. They should get them. That's the number one reason why I tell doctors not to use ClearCorrect, because without anterior bite turbos, it limits the outcome significantly. And if you get a posterior open bite by doing posterior expansion and you don't have the anterior bite turbos to balance it out, you're stuck and you're screwed. And this happens on so many clear correct cases and great. I hope I don't get a letter from clear correct, but it's the truth. And I don't know why they don't do it. I've been asking them for years to do it. Okay. So that's cool. That's a really non-issue for me. It's just going to be a default and they kind of contradicted themselves. At first they said that you'd have to opt into it in clinical preferences, but I went in both the general dental and the orthoclinical preferences, and I didn't see it in there. So it sounds like it's going to be default on any case that needs more than a half millimeter of deep bite correction or more than a half millimeter of transverse ex um, expansion on any tooth. It'll automatically trigger G8. I don't know what it's going to look like. They mentioned something about being green. There's nothing you have to do. It's just a series of attachments and movements and thicknesses of plastic. So it's nothing you have to do, nothing the patient has to do. The patient's not even going to know. So, um, but it's just going to be more predictable. The one thing the orthodontists were getting super excited about on this meeting is that they realized they don't have to over, over treat anymore, supposedly with G8. Um, okay. I wasn't really over treating to begin with, but then again, I was asking for additional attachments for retentions. I also wasn't treating posterior transverse cases unless they were kids. And then I would use an expander first. So maybe this changes things a little bit, but then again, the cases she showed us were so mild, you know, it was just like, so whoop de doo I was already doing those anyway. So I don't know. I don't really know. Um, are these proprietary G8 attachments for transverse and deep bite correction any different than what's already there? Slightly different shapes. I mean, to me, to be honest, I've done so, I'm seeing so many alternative aligner and white label aligner and everything that's not, and I'm not talking about clear correct, I'm talking about other ones. And if you'd like referrals to quote unquote the other ones that will remain unnamed, email me and I will send you a lot of other um, companies that you can go to that have really good alternative aligners for way cheaper than Invisalign. Some of them come with revisions refinements, some of them don't. Um, price point as low as $20 per aligner if you're gonna completely outsource, if you're gonna do it in house, of course you're with 3D printing, it's gonna be way cheaper, but then you're gonna have all that expense and you have to really quality control the manufacturing. If you're gonna do that, you cannot get cheap stuff. It doesn't work out. I've seen it happen too many times. You gotta really invest. You're talking a good $100,000 to make that happen. I would just outsource to get your systems up and running. 
um, or use one of these more full service alternative aligner companies, again, you contact me, I will refer you if that seems like it's a good fit for you. I'm not gonna name names because other people get pissed off. Um, okay, so that was for deep bite. The other thing about G8 was not only deep bite correction with the bite turbos and the additional attachments, um, it's also um, the G8 for transverse correction. So to help a little bit with posterior cross bites, not a full posterior cross bite. Again, they didn't show us any cases that were significant. So I don't know that it's anything special, but they're claiming there'll be less posterior open bites when you wanna improve coordination of the arches or maybe expand a little bit more than 0.5 millimeters in the back. I still don't think you should fix posterior cross bites in adults and kids, I'm still gonna do expanders first. I just feel more comfortable, but they're claiming it's gonna upright the teeth more and it will be better. So proof is in the pudding, show me the cases first. Haven't seen them, so I'm not really buying that. But um, if you wanna give it a try, a lot of you have these cases where you kind of start it, already open the can of worms you already cracked the egg. You're already trying to improve a little bit of, you know, posterior crossbites, maybe a dental crossbite, maybe a skeletal crossbite, and you already started it and you're getting a posterior open bite. They said that this is always due to anterior interference. That's bullshit because that's not always. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it is. That's the first thing you should look at. And they're saying to use your bite turbos. I was already using bite turbos on any transverse issues anyways. But sometimes it's not. So sometimes it's just cuspal interference and just uprighting the tooth. I still haven't found a way to do this well with Invisalign. They're claiming this will make a difference. Again, haven't seen the case. Don't believe it yet. I hope it, I hope it really does. And if there's a way I can get, you know, attack transverse issues a little better with Invisalign, for me, it works better in braces. I think I just get better outcomes with that and or an appliance first. But, you know, I hope it does. That would be wonderful. That's all I got to say. And if it does, the way they're explaining it is that there's different thicknesses of the plastic um, and different pressure points. And that would be proprietary. If so, that wouldn't be something you could do with, you know, say an in-house aligner. But again, proof is in the pudding. Haven't seen it yet. So what else do you need to know? Um, that's pretty much it. The only other thing that they said is that you can use this on progress cases if you want to do a refinement. You just have to trigger the refinement. So I think if you're having, if you're struggling with posterior open bites or if you're struggling with transverse issues or deep bite issues, I would stop and go ahead and initiate your refinement because you can go ahead, it'll trigger GA automatically or you can just ask for it. And you'll probably get a better outcome by doing the refinement now that they've released this. So that would be my suggestion. All right, hopefully this was helpful. Thank you.